Hi, welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hanlon. I'm the editor of WebPixel. I'd like to introduce you to Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Hi, Adam. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Um, we uh, did an episode recently about um, choosing and uh, photography competitions, choosing which ones to enter. Um, and we thought we'd like to expand on that a little bit by uh, and talk about how you can increase your chances of doing well in, in the competitions you choose to enter. So so I guess, as, as is always the case, I'm going to ask Alex, and he won't answer the question, but but we'll get there in the end. Um, so Alex, how what, what, what advice can you give for people to, to, to improve their chances of doing well in, 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 in photography competitions? Well, it's, it's the golden question, and there's obviously a lot of flippant answers like take better pictures, you know, <laughs> and, and yeah. all sorts of, of things like that. Um, Go to the opticians. The thing I want to focus on in answering the question today is to actually think about who's judging your pictures. And yeah. I think a lot about, uh, I think a lot of photographers would win photographic competitions if they chose the right entries. Yeah. And part of that problem is choosing the wrong ones of your own pictures to enter because you're emotionally attached to the certain pictures. But the yep. other aspect to think about in that is also thinking about who's going to be judging them and how they might react to your pictures. Yep. And actually, you know, the thing that you know came out of that con discussion about all the different contests on offer is that the variety of judges who are going to judge your work varying from a panel of your, your peers in a, in a public voting competition to an individual judge with very strong biases in a club competition, to yeah. the the various panels of judges in the big international contest. There's a lot of difference in the type of pictures that you might might choose to enter. Yeah. Um, um, just to, to knock the first couple on, on the head quickly, I would say for a club competition judged by your peers, I think you want to choose a picture, obviously that appeals to other underwater photographers and maybe shows that you're doing something a little bit different from everyone else because all that audience will know what the established norm is. Yeah. And therefore they're more likely to react to something that's a little bit different. Yeah. I have to say that that reasoning I don't think has always held in the past. And certainly there was a time when I used to enter um, in b suit competitions when I was an up and coming photographer in the UK. And a lot of my really creative work, I'd enter it in B-Soup and the audience there, they didn't vote for it because they'd been conditioned by, you know, people turning up and B-Soup going, this is the way pictures should be taken underwater. And my yeah, pictures yeah. weren't following those rules. And actually I wouldn't do well in B-Soup and those things. And a lot of those pictures went on to win me international prizes, but they weren't winning club competitions against pictures that you know, were nowhere close to getting international prizes. Yeah. Um, and that's because I was, you know, trying to really push boundaries and yeah. that, that particular audience wasn't necessarily responding to that. So understanding your audience, if your goal is to maximize your success in the competition, understanding who's judging the pictures makes a really big difference. And yeah. what I should have been doing to do well in those particular com competitions at that time was I should have been doing almost exactly the same as everyone else to a very high standard with a very small twist. And what yeah. I was actually doing was trying to do something completely different. Um, yeah. And it was just too different for, for that audience, um, which is, I think was a really interesting lesson for me. I think when you have an individual judge judging, as in you know a lot of monthly club competitions have that, understanding that judge and their idiosyncrasies is really important. Yeah. I don't think you should ever try and ever copy an individual judge's work to appeal to them. Actually, I think a lot of judges tend to respond to shots that they've not taken themselves and yeah. they, they wish they had. So, you know, yeah. think, oh, that judge is really well known for shooting this subject. Probably don't enter that subject in the competition. Instead, I, shoot something you know they haven't shot. I certainly think one of the criteria I use as a judge is, you know, had, would I like to have taken that picture? You know, yeah, is that a picture I'd have liked to have taken? Because um, and that's that's um, you know that means that probably if I have taken it, it may not do as well you know on that criteria. So yeah, I mean I think I think that's quite important. Yeah, yeah. Don't yeah, don't I, take I, the same I, stuff. I, you know, I, I can think of many examples. You know, um, in fact the the B suit meeting this week um, we we had the the judge in that he commented many times about pictures he really liked that he wished that he'd seen that subject or he hadn't been able to get that shot himself yet, and therefore that was to him seen as a good shot. Yep. And in fact, yep. I was I remember judging um, the the wet pixel competition probably a decade ago now, alongside a very famous underwater photographer, and he was in love with a dugong picture from the Red Sea, which wasn't a specially good picture, 
but he'd never photographed a dugong. He photographed yeah. most things in the ocean. So this dugong picture was the, the, the one to have, even yeah. though for a European photographer who's seen lots of people go to the Red Sea and photograph dugongs, I was like, it's not a particularly good one. That's very true of judges. It's a very good illustration of the judging process, isn't it? It, it is, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and obviously a good judging process gives the judges time to discuss these things. Yep. And I could yep. talk hours about what makes a good judge. But having that discussion time gives you the chance to beat some sense into each other yep. um, and, yep, and yep. produce hopefully a more rounded collection. Anyway, what I really wanted to talk about was kind of the types of judges and judging to expect in the three main types of contests we were talking about in the international round, which is the, the underwater photography competition, the wildlife photography competition, and the general photography competition, and mm. how the types of juries that those competitions will assemble will be very different. And therefore, mm. if you want to have success in the three, you need to consider that um, in terms of the pictures that you're choosing to enter. So a, a, a purely underwater photography competition is typically judged entirely by underwater photographers yeah. um, or maybe sometimes magazine underwater you know diving magazine or um, underwater photography magazine editors as well mm. um, yeah, yeah. and as a result they will all know underwater photography they'll know what's rare know what's common know what's difficult know what's easy and those things will become part of the decision making process indeed they'll also have seen thousands and thousands of underwater pictures and know what's new and innovative and what's maybe you know demanding of, 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 um, of rewarding. They'll also know what's pushing the boundaries in terms of doing something to a higher standard than's been done before. And I think so, that's, I think that, 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 um, that what's new and what's new and exciting is also, you know, stylistically as well, not just in terms of, in terms of subject selection or even, you know, the, you know, particular sort of style techniques that, that come and go in underwater imaging. And there's definitely a trend that develops in, in different types of, and that, that certainly someone who's, who's looking at a lot of underwater imagery will be aware of those style changes. So that's yeah. important sort of case for those. Yeah. 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 So I, I, I would say generally, the underwater photography community is generally more happy with the results from underwater photography competitions yeah. than perhaps they are generally with wildlife and nature competitions where they yeah. often feel the pictures don't really represent the cutting edge as they see it. Yes, um, agree, yeah. And I'm not saying that they're right. I'm just saying that that's, that's, they, they usually do yeah. that. And I think, I think most people say, yeah, actually, yeah, I tend to moan yeah. less about that than I do about this. Um, one thing I would say is that a lot of underwater photography competitions, they quite often, you tip, most judges typically tend to be slightly older. They mm. tend to be people who, you know, got an amazing track record in underwater photography, but aren't maybe, uh, are maybe beyond pushing the cutting edge themselves yeah. these days. Yeah. And that can really vary on how they judge. It yeah. usually always means that they're not always that enthusiastic about the latest trend that, Perhaps the photographers who are up there sharing pictures on social media the whole time all think it's the new hot thing. Yep. And often they won't react that well to it. So just because yep. you think this is the trend of the year, they might yep. be a bit, oh, I'm not really into that. doesn't seem that yep. good to me. Whereas everyone yep. else is going, what? I love this, you know, whatever it happens to be this particular year. And there's a million yep. examples even in the last decade of things. Yep. Um, that said, don't, you know, if you look at a judging panel and there's a lot of older photographers on there, don't necessarily think there'll be real stick in the muds and there'll be, oh, it's got to be all classic technique. Um, one of the, the oldest judges I've judged with um, is, um, is Colin Doig, who was one of the founders of the British Society of Underwater Photographers back in the 60s. And yeah. you couldn't find a photographer who's more enthusiastic about fresh imagery than he is. You know, yeah. new techniques. Oh, I've not seen that done before. I've not seen this done before. Always trying to keep his finger on the pulse about what people are doing. So just because you see, you know, oh, here's someone who in the 60s, 70s and 80s was doing all this great stuff. Sometimes it means they're really into classic style. Sometimes yeah. it means that actually they're as fascinated by the boundaries being pushed back as ever. So, yeah. you know, and yeah. so, you know, you, you can judge it both ways. And the way I would typically approach a competition is to enter a little bit of both. Enter yeah. stuff, you know, because you want to head, you, you, you know, if you enter all in one style, first of all, you're going to compete with yourself a little bit, but also you're giving the, the judges the chance to maybe go for different styles of your images. Yeah. And actually a judging panel that's trying to create a diverse collection for the competition of winners 
um, actually you give yourself more chance of success if all your pitches are slightly different. They might end up choosing all of yours rather than if they're all very similar. They're all exactly. Good. Yeah. I mean, ultimately, the more images you get on the shortlist, the more chance there is you're going to placing. So, so yeah. if your images all look very similar, you're only going to get one of them on the shortlist. Whereas if you're a range of images, um, that you're more likely to get multiple images on the shortlist, which increases your chances of uh, of coming out as, as a finalist or as a as winner. Yeah, sure. And yeah. um, to back that point up, not at all. We'll move on to wildlife photography competitions, <laughs> <laughs> which um, we're just joking about that because. We were complaining, or not complaining, we were pointing out fairly recently that um, a lot of wildlife photography competitions have not been generate have not been generating particularly diverse portfolios of underwater pictures in their in their um, in their winners of late. Anyway, mm. I think the first thing to remember about the big wildlife and nature photography competitions is a lot of them won't have any underwater photographers on the panels of judges, yep. and if they yep. do, it's likely to be only one. Yep. And that underwater photographer may well be quite a weak voice on the panel simply because they're not used to moving in those circles. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, you've got, you'll have a panel of people, all of whom know each other, and then one underwater photography judge who's been invited along because they've heard of them but doesn't know the other people. Yep. And, it and, and a lot of underwater photographers, their first time ever judging a big nature photography competition. Yeah. And depending on their personality, they may. Um, they may not feel that they really want to be that forceful with their opinions, um, you know, so much. Of course, they will get a lot of respect when it comes to the underwater category. Um, yeah. But, you know, you can't rely on having one underwater photographer on a judging panel, particularly if it's six or seven judges, for them yeah. to be able to really make sure that, you know, the underwater photography categories really reflect, you know, the cutting edge of underwater photography. It's very much going to be a decision made by land nature photography people and and in that panel you know the the if it, to take our, mythical, our, our example panel you know where you've got five or six judges which one's underwater the other five wildlife photographers um or nature photographers tend to actually all be very familiar with a lot of the techniques and um creatures that that, that they're seeing in terms of terrestrial photos whereas an underwater photographer frequently has no experience whatsoever of shooting lions or elephants or you know zebras mm. they're all amazing um, and that's difficult you know they 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 i mean conversely of course the, the land photographers don't have any experience with underwater but underwater typically is only one category whereas the terrestrial stuff is, is often many categories mm. so it can you know it can be it can be a quite challenging experience for for the underwater so we sort of parachuted into that um yeah it, it can also be the other way around and my own experience was was really different um and you know i've done a lot of of the big nature photography competitions but first of all i actually have a i'm very passionate about nature in general you know mm. i've i've been to africa I, you know i i know a lot about african wildlife i you know traveled widely with underwater photography but i'm very interested in birds i know a lot of bird species um my wife loves you know orchids and mushrooms so i'm really good on those subjects as well and I've also judged a lot of competitions. And one of the things that really surprised me is that when I went on and started judging these major wildlife photography competitions, I was much more experienced as being involved in a judging process than a lot mm. of the other judges. Mm. And I knew exactly how to pick my fights as a judge. Mm. And I you know, mm. play, you know, got from the system exactly what I wanted to. So it mm. can work the other way around. Just, you know, so, mm. but I think that I was rather unusual because I judged, you know, hundreds and hundreds of underwater photography competitions. I know how the dynamics of a judging room work. I know, you know, there's times to fight and there's times not to fight if you want to make sure that you get to choose, you get to make sure that there aren't the, the images that you don't think are deserving in there. So there's a lot to that. Anyway, um, I think um, j just to, to track back to a much more important point, which is I think the main thing that a wildlife photography panel tend to go for in the underwater world is they like the underwater world to surprise them in mm. terms of the subject matter that's there. Mm. They like these otherworldly images, these pictures that make the underwater world feel different. This can yeah. be with atmosphere of the images. You, yeah. If you look through the results of lots of nature photography competitions for the underwater categories, you'd be amazed how many available light pictures they are, there yeah. are in there. They like yeah. blue pictures, they like green pictures, they like pictures with that, you know, with a real underwater feeling in them. They yep. don't like fisheye lenses. Underwater photographers, we shoot fisheyes all the time. We're really used to seeing fisheye pictures. We hardly notice the distortion in them, if we, if at all. Land yep. photographers can find them quite 
oh god that's really too much i don't like that distortion, distortion they really don't yeah. like fisheye pictures so that's yep. something to be careful of um yep. For a long time, wildlife pictures, underwater categories in wildlife competitions used to be dominated by big animals. It used to be a yeah. little bit of a running joke that the person who went on the new big animal trip that just come up that year, who got the best yeah. photo from that trip, would automatically be a shoe in for all the big wildlife photography competitions that year. It used to be, oh, this year it was hammerheads, next year it's sperm whales, the year yeah. after it's polar bears underwater, then it's, you know, um, leopard seals. And, you know, and year after year, you'd, there'd be another big animal that would come along and, and be the one that dominated. I think in more recent years, they've actually been, you know, I think the big trend you've seen across a lot of nature photography competitions has been blackwater pictures doing well. You know, we had them yep. in the wildlife books this year, the close-up photographer of the year, the overall winner of that was a blackwater picture. And yeah. I think that those pictures do well in the underwater categories because they also, they're just so alien to land photographers that they really respond to them. And they're graphically yeah. very strong as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. they have both those, those elements to them. Um, yeah. So those things I think can, can, you know, can work well. But for me, it's something that really surprised them. I, I think you tend to have less success with subjects that they feel more familiar with. Yeah. Um, although every now and again, you know, you can really twist things up by actually, you know, taking a subject they all know like an anemone fish and doing something incredible with it, actually yep. typically they tend to respond to pictures that that's, that are going to surprise them. Oh, I never knew that animal even existed. And this is an amazing image of an animal I never knew existed. That, that's a winner. Or, yep. you know, so those are things. And then I'd like to just finish off by moving on to general competitions, if that's all right. Yeah, photography, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I think general photography competitions are much harder to call yeah. Um, I think, first of all, you could say that the graphic quality, the visual qualities of the image are incredibly important because yeah. chances are the judging panel is going to be very diverse from different areas of photography and will have almost no idea about what your subject is, even if it's yeah. a common subject. Yeah. Um, and all they're going to react to is the image. Yeah. Um, they're also not going to have any specialist knowledge of, of underwater photography techniques. So you will often see pictures that don't use classic underwater photography techniques you know you might have a picture that's maybe very you know isn't very well lit but it's created a really nice atmosphere will do well in these competitions pictures that underwater photographers will go that really should be better you know it's got blurry corners or it's not very well lit one strobe's really bright one's really dark you know it's it was clearly a bit of a you know not exactly what the photographer wanted um yep. actually in, in that situation you know pictures that aren't what underwater photographers would regard as technically good can actually do really well as yeah. long as they're graphically and eye-catchingly strong yeah um, i think i think the crucial thing here is engaging it's got to engage it's got to be one of those images that grabs you by in some way and typically graphically is the most common way um you know if, if it hasn't got that it's not going to make it through into the shortlist um, mm. and it doesn't matter how rare the subject is it doesn't matter how beautifully you shot it none of those things is relevant at all it's got yeah. it really got to have that wow factor that kind of punch um and, and that and and definitely and that, pictures the strong human element in them. Yeah. You know, it's not you know, it's not nature photography anymore. And I think there's a lot that can be done with people underwater that can do really well in these competitions. Yeah, I think a lot of this kind of the modeling stuff that's being done um, mm. around the place now is, you know, I, I'm not sure it is that well represented in photography competition. I'm sure it should be. Um, mm. And I think it would do really well um, in a lot of these types mm. of competition. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think the best sure. thing you can do as an entrant is to enter a wide variety of pictures because yep. it's always surprising what they choose. But yep. make sure all of them are graphically strong. You know, you can really push processing, you know, yep. do some really extremely contrast to black and whites or high key images or, you know, I think all sorts of things can, can really appeal. Um, yep. You know, and, and I, as can classic nature because a lot of these general competitions do have nature categories. So, yep. you know, classic nature photography can do well. I think on that one thing point I would make is most of those general photographic competitions don't have strong ethical rules or mm. indeed have judges that would be aware that a picture was ethically dubious. So, of course, you could win with a picture that is ethically, you know, very dubious. But one thing yeah. I would say is, as a warning to anyone is, of course, if you do win one of these competitions, you want to show off about it to your friends. And if your friends are underwater photographers, they're going to come down and you, you know, like a ton of bricks if you but yeah, in a yeah. Duke's ethical picture. So although the competition may not have any ethical rules, always consider if you are successful, you've got to stand up among, in front of your peers and, and, and show this picture. 
So it's yeah, not. Absolutely. What, what, well, beyond that, it's you know the competition will be plastering you, that image everywhere. So so it's what people associate with you, isn't it? So you want to be yeah, careful absolutely. about about how you uh, how you're viewed. Um, yeah. I think there's lots of good advice there, Alex. Thank you very much. Um, no, they're really interesting to talk about judges. So. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a very interesting process to be involved with, and and. Um, and uh, yeah, it's certainly important in terms of entering competitions. Um, we we we've got some some competitions coming up soon. So um, there's uh, Wildlife Talk for the Year, um, North Talk for the Year. Um, next year we'll have Duet Pixel Masters again. Um, so yes. um, and we'll uh, I'm sure we'll, we'll return to this subject in, in future. Ocean so Art is open as well at the moment. Ocean Art's open now. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm sure it's a subject that we'll return to again in the future, probably mm. probably more than once. Um, yeah, well, yeah, I, I've never known underwater photographers who don't want to talk about contests. <laughs> <laughs> um, so thank you very much, Alex. Um, thanks to our sponsor of today's episode, which was Backscatter, Photos and Video. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, I hope you've got lots out of it. Please like it if you've enjoyed it. And feel free to add your experience of underwater, uh, sorry, your experience of photography competitions to the comment section um, below this video. Thanks very much. I look forward to seeing you soon.